What's up everyone and welcome to this video. As you can see, I've got a new setup, so let me know what you think of it in the comments below. Today, what I want to do is show you how you can send an image to the Claude API and then submit a prompt asking Claude a question about that image. This was a video requested by one of you guys, so I do respond to requests. And of course, if you have any, you do let me know. Anthropic have just released Claude 3 and that comes in three different variations, Haiku, Sonnet and Opus. And in this video, I'm going to give you an in-depth overview of the API. And then what I'll do is I'll show you how you can build an end-to-end -end application in Python that sends an image to Claude and then with that we'll send along a prompt to get Claude to answer a question we have about that image. This video is jam-packed you're going to learn a lot and of course it's going to be incredibly useful if you're thinking about building your own application that's going to interact with the Claude 3 API. It takes me about seven hours to make a video like this so do take a couple of seconds just to give it a like. Not only will it go a long way to helping me grow this channel but of course it will help this video reach others who are interested in this topic too. With that said buckle up your seatbelts and let's get started. Now I'm on the Anthropic introduction page where they go over the Claude model. And here you can see the different user guides, the API reference and the prompter library. We'll go through this together now, but I highly recommend that you explore it in your own time, especially if you're thinking about building your own application that's going to be interacting with the Claude API. If we scroll down here, they give you a quick introduction to the Claude models. And of course they go over the different models available right now with respect to Claude 3. Now in short, they have three different models, Haiku, Sonnet and Opus. And if we scroll further down here, you can see they're comparing each one of these models and I want to bring your attention to a few things here. The first thing is that they're advocating that the Claude 3 Opus model is most powerful for highly complex tasks. But the one thing to keep in mind with this is that it is the most expensive. So if you are doing very complex tasks, maybe you're asking Claude to write a novel for you or analyze a novel. In that case, you want to use Opus. But do keep in mind that it is much more expensive compared to the cheapest model, which of course is Haiku. Here you can see they've given a ratio of input to output per million tokens and you can see they're charging about $15 compared to Haiku which is about 25 cents. Now although Haiku isn't yet available right now I've been testing myself with Sonnet and for the most part it's been working pretty well for me. And Sonnet what they're saying here is it offers maximum utility at a lower price, dependable and it's balanced and I found that to be the case for myself too. In terms of the context window it's the same for each one of these 200,000 so that's no different and as you can see here Opus is a bit slower because it takes time to give you what is going to be a complex response where Whereas Sonnet is fast and of course Haiku, the cheapest one, is going to be the fastest. Now if you scroll down further below, they've got this diagram that shows you how each one of these models scale in terms of cost. And they've also given you links to the benchmarks, but we won't go over that now. Now they've added a few more sections around text generation and system prompts is definitely one area that I highly recommend that you take a look at. A system prompt allows you to give Claude some task instructions or context before you submit your main prompt. The idea behind this is you can set up Claude to give you exactly the response that you want and you can give it instructions and rules and guidance for that. If you scroll down further below, they show you how you can give Claude a system prompt in an example here, but I have made a detailed video about this and I'll link to that, of course, in the description below. System prompts is definitely one of my favorite features is one thing that I've been using so much and for all of the prompts that I've stored locally, each one of those has a system prompt. They also link to a prompting techniques guide and I highly recommend that you check this out. It's not just specific to Claude, it's also quite useful uh, when you're working with other models too. As you can see on the left hand side, these headings do a really good job of giving you techniques for prompt engineering. With your prompts, you want to be clear and direct. You want to chain them. You want to give Claude a role. You want to let Claude think. So take a look at each one of these sections. It definitely will help you as you work with other models too. Now they have a new vision section that they've added, and this is where they give examples of how you can send images to the Claude API. We're going to be doing that together, and we're going to be building an end-to-end -end example that takes a file that we have stored locally and submits a prompt asking Claude uh, questions about that image. So now I'm in the API reference section there's a few things that I just want to draw your attention to. In terms of getting started with Claude you can submit a curl request on your terminal and all you need to do is provide the API key and you're good to go. That's the most basic example of course you're probably going to want to do more than that but this just gives you an idea of how you can get quickly started. Now I've jumped to the messages API section and this is where you're going to be spending most of your time especially as you're building your application. Now as you can see this is an endpoint it's a post endpoint but if you're using the Python SDK you don't have to worry too much about 
about this, um, but I will be going over this in our example later on. The first thing that you have to do when you're working with this messages API is start off by specifying the model that you want to send the prompt to. Now that of course can be one of Claude's older models, but for this example, the example that we're going to build later on, we're going to be using the Claude 3 Sonnet model. Now if you scroll down further below, you see this messages key and it needs to be what's known as an array of objects. This is really important. This is the crux of the prompt. And as you can see, the way Claude operates or Anthropic mention it here, our models are trained to operate on alternating user and assistant conversational terms. What that basically means is that you're going to have an array of messages and Claude will look at this array of messages and it will respond or it will populate the last message. So the idea is that you can have this back and forth conversation and you can maintain that conversation and you can give that to Claude so that it can continue that conversation. Now each message itself within this messages array has to have a role and it has to have content. Now the role can refer to user in which case that's going to be us or it can be assistant which is going to be Claude and the content itself of course is going to be the content of that message. Now if you scroll further down below you can see that they've updated the documentation now to reflect the new changes with the Claude 3 models and as you can see they show you how you can send an image and what you have to do is you have to convert that image into a base64 string and then what you do is you send that data in the API request. That's quite straightforward if you've worked with images before or if you've worked with APIs before usually when it comes to sending images you do it by converting it first to base64 and then sending that in the request and you can see they say here we currently support the base64 source type for images and these are the different content types they support so they support jpegs pngs gifs and webp media types now further down below of course you have the system prompt i've talked about this i love this we're not going to be using that in our example again i will link to a video in the description below which goes over this into more depth and the next thing that you have to specify in this request is the maximum number of tokens that claude will send before it stops again if you're doing very detailed prompts maybe again novel analysis or something along those lines max tokens will definitely be important because essentially you want to get responses in chunks and then process those chunks but if you're not doing any kind of complex prompting then you can probably get away with the default and then the last thing i want to draw your attention to is this temperature parameter this temperature parameter just refers to kind of the randomness as they say here that's going to be injected or given to you as a response by claude it defaults to one which means that claude is going to give you a response that's oriented for prompts related to creative or generative tasks but if you want a more concrete answer maybe it's related to a stem subject uh, maybe it's a multiple choice question in that case you want to bring that temperature down to zero now of course you want to test this yourself the default is one but again this kind of depends on the prompt that you're sending i highly recommend that you play around with this value um, to find the optimal value that works for your application okay and one more thing that i want to show you in the messages api is this messages examples what i really like about anthropic and if you guys are watching this video kudos to you because it is really good in the way that you've included so many different examples that developers can kind of copy and they can quickly get started with so hats off to you guys as you can see they've given you an example everything from a basic request and response to a conversation that has more than one message to getting claw to give you a specific response using the assistant uh, role and then further down below they've given you more examples for images so this is really good uh, again uh, kudos to you guys i think this is very useful and if you're watching this video and you want to explore some of these examples you can check them out on the messages api page now the last section that i want to touch on and it's this new page that anthropic have added which is the prompt library as you can see this is a library of optimized prompts that anthropic have provided that cover all different areas from business and personal tasks this is really handy because if you have a particular task you might find that they already have a prompt for you and given that these prompts are in the section it's likely to have been optimized uh, for that use case so make sure you check this out you might find what you want here i have taken a few of these and used them for my day-to-day -day prompting so this is a section that at the moment it seems like they're maintaining but they've added a user submitted prompts and soon enough it's empty right now but i imagine they're going to open up to uh, developers like ourselves all right so that covers the api section hopefully that gives you a good overview it's time to now jump into an end to end example where i'm going to show you how you can build a python application that sends an image directly to the Claude api and submits a prompt along with that 
to ask Claude questions about that image. All right, my favorite part of the video is time to start coding. So the first thing that I've done is created a project directory. I've called it Claude3Image Prompt, and this is where we're going to store our project files. At the moment in this directory, I only have one file, and that is a picture of a cat that I downloaded off Google, and I'll show you what that looks like. Nothing special, but what we're going to do in this Python application is send this image off to Claude, and then we're going to ask Claude to identify what's in this image. Now let's start off by creating the files that we're going to need for this project. The first one is a requirement text file and that's going to be storing our dependencies for the project. We only need one dependency and that is the anthropic library so I'm going to start off by creating my virtual environment and then identify which version of anthropic that we want to install. We'll put it in the requirements.txt file and then we'll be good to go to actually start writing code. So I'll create my virtual environment by typing python 3.8 that's what uh, the version of python that I'm going to be using and then my virtual environment I'm going to call it venv and then what I'll do is I'll source that virtual environment. And then what I'll do is to find out the version of Anthropic, given that they update quite frequently. Um, I just need to type in pip install Anthropic followed by two equal signs. And as you can see, it's 0 .20 .0 0. And then what I'll do is I will type echo Anthropic 0 .20 .0. And I'll put that into the requirements.txt file. And then if I type less requirements.txt, as you can see down below here, requirement or the anthropic library has now been put into the requirements.txt file. And that's the version that we want to install. And then to install that dependency in the requirements.txt file, I'll type pip install dash r requirements.txt. And now that dependency has been installed, it's time to start writing our code. To do that, I'm going to create our main file that's going to store all of our code, and that's going to be the main.py file. And then I'm going to open this in NeoVim. That's the editor that I'm going to be using today. You can, of course, uh, use any editor that you like. Okay, so I'm in my main.py file, and the first thing that we want to do is import some libraries that we're going to be using for this project. So the first one is going to be OS. The next one uh, we're going to import is the path module from the path lib library. And then we're going to install or uh, import Anthropic. Now we've got those libraries in place, the next thing that we want to do is instantiate a new Anthropic client that we're going to use to send out calls to the Claude API. To do that, what I'm going to do is type in client and then set that equal to Anthropic. And then what we need to do is pass it an API key. Now I'm going to pull this from an environment variable. We haven't added this yet, but I'm going to show you how to do that later on. But let's assume that it's in there. And to pull out that environment variable, we type in os.environment.get. And then what we're going to do is call it Anthropic API underscore key. Right, so I've moved myself over to the right so I don't make that mistake in the last video where I was covering the code. Um, but the next thing that we want to do is create the main method. So I'll do that by tapping in main. And then what we'll do is we'll create this prompt variable. This is going to be the prompt um, that we send off to Claude and it's going to be what is in this image, fairly simple. And then the next thing we want to do is create a response variable and that's going to be equal to calling this method, submit image prompt and that's going to take in the location of the image and then we're going to send the prompt along with that. We haven't created this method yet, but that's fine. We'll create that in a second. Now, one thing to note here is that the response that Claude gives back is going to contain an array of message blocks. Each one of these blocks is going to be a certain type. So you can get a text block back. It can be a code block. It can be a markdown block. And what you want to do, depending on the UI that you're building, you want to render it appropriately, right? Depending on the kind of content that you're getting back. Given that in this case, we're just going to get back a text block and I just want to print it out onto the screen. It's fairly straightforward. So all I need to do is type in for block in response.content if the block, so let's just do a check. If the block.type is a text block, then I'll just print out the block uh, dot text. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is create the method called submit image prompt. So what we'll do is we'll type in def submit image prompt. That's going to take in the image path followed by the prompt. And then what we'll do is we'll start off by creating a response variable that's going to store the response. And this is essentially where we're going to call the method on the client that's going to take the image and the prompt and send it off to the Claude API. So to do that, I need to type in client.messages.create. And then here I need to pass in the model that we're going to use. Again, we're going to be using the Claude 3 Sonnet model. And I believe I have that in the clipboard. Have that there. 
So that's the sonnet model. Of course, if you want to use Opus, you can. The next thing that we need to do is pass in the maximum number of tokens before we want the response to stop from Claude. Now, given that I'm not expecting much text to come back, I'm going to leave it as the default or just pass in uh, 1024, which should be sufficient for this. Now, the next parameter is where we're going to be doing most of the work, and that is the messages array. Essentially, in this, what we want to do is send in two messages. So one is going to be the image itself, and the second one is going to be the prompt. And then we'll put these two together in a conversation messages array, and then we're going to send that off to Claude in this request. Okay, stay with me. This bit might look a bit tricky, but I'm going to explain everything. So what we want to do is pass in the value for the messages parameter, and this is going to be an array that's going to contain a single object. And in here, we're going to have the role, and we're going to set that equal to user. And then for the content itself, this is going to be equal to an array that's going to consist of two objects. The first object is going to be the image and the second object is going to be the text. So to construct the object for the image, what we need to do is pass in an object here and we're going to set the type equal to image. And then what we'll do is uh, we'll pass in the source, which is going to be details for that image. That itself is going to be an object. We need to pass in the type. It's going to be a base 64. And then of course, what we need to do is give in the data. The data is going to be, and this is where we're going to use the path module. It's quite handy for this. So it'll be path file, and then followed by parent dot drawing path. And then it's going to be the image path that we passed into this method. And then the last thing that we need to do is pass in the media type for this image. And again, this is going to be image JPEG. Cool. So the second object that we need to pass into this content array is the actual prompt that we want to send off the Claude, which is what is in this image. Now, again, the prompt, if you remember above, we're passing in the, this into the method. Um, so what we need to do is include it down here. So create another object in this content array. Uh, we're going to pass in the type, which is going to be equal to text. And then the text itself is just going to be equal to the prompt. So this one's a lot more straightforward, much easier than passing in an image. And I think we're good to go. And then the last thing is you just want to make sure you include or return the response. And uh, I think we have this in a good place. So we can now give this a run. Okay, so just one more thing before we give this application a run. I'm in my terminal now. You're going to need a file called .env. So this file here, I've created it. This file, the contents of this file, it has a single line. I can't show you it because it contains my API key, but it has a single line and it looks like this export anthropic underscore API underscore key and then equals followed by your API key. So just create this file, this .m file, have this line after the equal sign, just put in your API key, save it. And then once you've done that, type in source.env. And what that will do is it will source that API key and put it into your environment variables, which you will need uh, before you run this application. Otherwise, you're going to get an error back from the Claudia API saying that uh, you need to provide a correct authentication. All right, so it's time to give this application a run and let's quickly remind ourselves what it's going to do. When we run this application, it's going to send an image that we have in our local directory, which is a picture of a cat. And we're going to send it with a prompt where we're asking Claude what is in this image. And I'm hoping that it's going to give me a much more detailed response than this is a cat. I want a lot more detail than that. So that's what I'm hoping for. And let's see what happens. So to run this application, I'm going to type in Python 3 main.py and I'll tap enter. It's taking a few seconds, taking a few more seconds. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we've got back this response. Okay, it looks pretty good off um, on the first glance. Okay, so what I'll do is let's actually bring up the image at the same time. So I'll do type in kitty eye cat. All right, so that's the image of the cat. And then what we'll do is we'll go through the description and compare it against the image of the cat. So this image shows an extreme close up view of a cat's face against a black background. That's correct. The cat has large round eyes with dark pupils that are staring directly at the camera. I'm not sure about that. You know, I'm being a bit nitpicky here, but yeah, I think it's fair to say that it's actually looking at the camera. Um, its fur appears to be light brown or tan in color with darker brown markings. That's correct. The cat's pink nose and whiskers are also visible in this tightly cropped portrait shot. That's very true. This is quite detailed, actually. I'm quite impressed, which ha highlights the feline's expressive features and inquisitive gaze. You know what? Fair play. This is actually very good. A lot more detail than I could have provided, at least. Um, yeah, no, I'm impressed by that. All right, so that's it. 
right so we built a python application and hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can send an image uh, directly to the cloud api and submit a prompt asking questions about that image now if you haven't already i highly recommend that you check out my other video here which goes over how you can use system prompts with the cloud api system prompts is one of my favorite and it's definitely a powerful feature that if you combine with this image capability here you can build some pretty cool applications and of course if you haven't already make sure you subscribe because i'm going to be making a lot more videos about how you can use the cloud api and maybe in my next video i'm going to show you how you can submit multiple images with cloud yeah i think i'm going to do that until then thanks for tuning in and i'll see you in the next one peace